We'll throw open just a fun opening question. I mean, obviously these are great jobs for you guys to have. What are the worst jobs you've had in Hollywood? In, ho in, 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 in Hollywood, the state before, of California? Before, yeah. Okay. In, in your ascent to being yes. to your current jobs. Okay. I worked at Chi Chi's, which is a restaurant, once for a day. Only a day? Did you get fired I, or did you leave? I quit. I, nice. That was in Cleveland back in the day. And um, yeah, I have many more. Go ahead. I didn't mean to start. Go ahead. <laughs> Welcome to The Real Housewives. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not Camille. <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> Somebody said I was Camille. I on like Camille. No. No, I didn't. Oh, yeah. yeah. okay. You're still not Camille. <laughs> I could be. I, wor I worked at The Gap and found out I'm not a really good folder. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to really fold well when you work at The Gap. Mm -hmm. Was that when you were auditioning for roles or is that... Uh, it was when, I mean, it was when I was just really pounding the pavement in New York. Mm -hmm. Does that count? That doesn't count. Yeah, of totally. course. Yeah. Okay, you said Hollywood, not yeah. New York. It's on your it's ascent. Business. On sure your business. ascent. Right. You know, New York counts. Yeah, totally. Of How about the rest of you? Any egregious, horrible jobs? You guys, we're doing a terrible job right we now. Are. We, we are. Start we suck. I mean, I have some crazy stuff, suck. too. Like, I, I did murder mysteries in, like, you know, dinner theaters in the <laughs> now Poconos. Now we're you know? oh, I, I mean, I had to fake my own death a whole bunch. There well, <laughs> we're not any strangers <laughs> to that, either. But. I did a Mexican game show. Alert. You, you did? did? I did. I forgot oh, about good. that. It was called Nubaloos. And I had to sing and dance. And it was like, you know those Nickelodeon shows where they're, like, um, you you can can't do that on television or something. Yeah. It was like that, except the FCC wouldn't let us in the country because we were like holding kids' heads underwater, <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't really get picked up here. Where so. was it filmed? In Peru. Wow! Wow! wow. How exotic! Wow. It was in Lima. It was great. <laughs> it was great. Wonderful. Crazy. That's awesome. Yeah, that's my claim to fame. Um, I worked at the silent movie theater, but that was kind of cool. The one in oh, here in LA? Cool. Yeah, oh, that was cool. Really cool. I liked it. They, I didn't like cleaning the bathrooms as much. Yeah, that'd be mm. nice. But I got into as it, you know? I got into the bathrooms, you got into the bathrooms. As much as the popcorn. I got to embrace the job. So, yeah. Whatever the job is, you embrace yeah, it. Yeah, but people are really messy in movie theaters. Yeah. They're really messy. They just some weird movie stuff movie in there. You go see like a silent film, you expect it's like a respectful experience, and there's just like popcorn all over the floor, and Coke, and that gets sticky. <laughs> that's not what was sticky. <laughs> so you got lucky if that's all you got. Mm -hmm. yeah, I used to Buster Keaton's a real key turn on. New York City school. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Which was like, uh, it was great and hard. And I even did it after I started working in films. I didn't, you know, totally did not make enough money after my first movie to live off of that. So I was, I had to stop. After I did Save the Last Dance, I had to stop substituting in high schools because they were like, Chenille is substituting. <laughs> um, and could only do elementary schools. <laughs> they would call you and leave you a message like, can you work today? You say, yeah, it was that. actually the perfect job because audition wise, they call you in the morning. So if I had auditions, I wouldn't go. Mm -hmm. But if I didn't have auditions, I would go and substitute teach. I've taught everything from computers to Russian. Wow. <laughs> so you're really smart in real life. No. <laughs> That's great. Humble no, bragging. I just did what the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you no. go to college? <laughs> yeah. You went to college. I did. Did you guys all go to college? No. I didn't either. Yeah. I feel happy now. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Oh, I'm going to college. I'm going to go you? to Valley. Uh-huh. I like love a year. that. Really? I don't know. Just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> my oldest is in college, and I thought, wouldn't it be fun to go to school with him? And oh I was like, my. that's the worst. Oh, thing he, he would not. not. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's not having that. He would not like that. He's no. like, stay. You know it's a good stay movie idea. Yeah. From I'm, I'm like, I could be a cheerleader. You're on the football team. <laughs> that is oh. a sitcom oh. in the oh. making. <laughs> right? Yeah. You want to yeah. produce that? Let's that do it. That was a movie with uh, Rodney Dangerfield. Right. Yeah. Wow, deep pull. Back to school. Yeah. Right. Yes. Anna, yeah. you're being very quiet over there. What's your, what's your worst? Um, it was it was in Chicago and it was um, probably it was during the summer. I just finished a play and I went play to play and I was just able to you know pay my rent while I was while I was doing you know doing the plays. But then um, I was a terrible waitress, mm -hmm. terrible temp. So the only job I could get that would let me off to audition during the day was um, I found this 
ad for a cleaning service called Mary Maids. And uh, <laughs> so I uh, said, would you let me off during the day because we cleaned in teams. And she said, yeah, you can, you can, as long as you come back and finish up for your partner. I said, great, fine. And, um, but we were cleaning, we were doing clean outs for apartments like after somebody's lease was up. So, Ugh. oh no. Wow. Oh. So it was um, intense because it was huge. We were in huge towers downtown and it was like 110 degree weather, humidity, and the AC was off. Um, oh. And um, it was, it was pretty, pretty uh, intense. Um, wow. But it was good because it was it was the thing that made me you know I I remember calling my mom and saying this is awful and she said this is what you wanted to do and so get through it because you'll have to have you know there'll be times like this where you mm -hmm. have to get through this and it was the it was that I remember was the turning point for me where I thought this is I'm glad she said you're you're on your own basically mm -hmm. so make it work and I it, it was the time where I thought you gotta you gotta make this you better make this work or mm -hmm. you're gonna be scrubbing toilets <laughs> and, uh, and doing all that. What's been the most surprising thing about working in Hollywood? Something you didn't expect, something that maybe caught you off guard? We'll make Kate answer that one. <clears throat> answer last one. Mm -hmm. The most surprising yeah. thing? Something you didn't expect about being a working actress. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've, it's literally the only thing I've ever done. So, like, mm. as a child, it's not like I expected anything, really. <laughs> um, I guess a lot of people ask, like, what's your, what was your worst experience or, or um, like, working with certain actors? And the most surprising thing is probably not having terrible experiences mm -hmm. with people, even when, you know, you hear rumors about certain directors or actors or whatever, and I maybe I'm just lucky, but I also don't feel like I feel like people are generally pretty nice and mm -hmm. generous and not that dramatic. Yeah, mm -hmm. especially actresses too. I mean, I think people expect actresses to be like clawing at each other, right. and I'm sure there are those, but like couple of you guys I just met today, but like most of you guys I've met before and know and hung out with and everyone's really nice and like loves each other's work and yeah. is a fan, a genuine fan. Mm -hmm. And encourages each, each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like we all encourage each other well, so we get much. It. It's sure. like a sisterhood. It's a hard business to be in. And Absolutely. It's not, you know, all roses and daisies. Yeah. I just quoted a real housewife. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's a little familiar with the franchise over there. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> That's my next job. Um, but I agree. It's like it's all. It's it should be fun and celebrated. Yeah. And I think the older I get, the less competitive I feel. Mm -hmm. Or I I really celebrate and get genuinely excited for for ladies. Mm -hmm. I think when you have any success or you are working, you realize that you you meet people that are are like you, and they have the same struggles and insecurities and problems and everyone's got ups and downs sure. and you don't get parts and you know you don't get what you want and and you realize like oh everyone is like kind of like you and mm -hmm. it's not you know it feels much more equal in a way and it's a lot more fun if you can share stories and make friends and yeah. be in it together with people as opposed totally. to isolate yourself mm -hmm. and and you know I, I agree with you I think that that's one of the things I found here and particularly with actresses that I've really been able to surround myself with women who are, who empower each other mm -hmm. and, um, you know, support each other, mm -hmm. and that's that's exciting. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing you at auditions, you know, years ago, yeah. and we struck up a friendship just seeing each other in rooms a lot. Yeah. And and it was nice to see somebody that you could talk to in a room that. It, it, there wasn't the vibe of oh I can't talk to you because we're going in for the same job, the, but it was always yeah it was so, always yeah. very warm and supportive and nice to know that there was somebody you could talk to and and that was that was great to strike up a friendship in that particular yeah. situation. So I do you recall any that. terrible auditions offhand? All of them. All of them. No. On a good day, I feel like, this is on a really good day, I feel like auditions are an opportunity for me to just do what I love doing for 15 minutes mm -hmm. and be detached from the result. That's on a, you know, on a, when I'm in a good space. Um, and th that is the most it can be, you know, as you're trying to solve somebody's problem, either by letting them know what they want or by helping them know what they don't want. But you're mm -hmm. just in there to kind of see if you're the puzzle piece for them. Um, 
and that's how I prefer to think about it mm -hmm. because then it, you're not buying into this myth of like, you know, what's my, I want what's yours. It's like what's yours is yours and there's yeah. enough for everybody yeah. and just do what you love to do. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you may have a terrible story to share though. That that's very <laughs> <laughs> That's all nice, that's but so let's hear the bad story. It's very sad. Wow. That's very It's true. It's good. I'll think of one. <laughs> Anyone else? It doesn't have to be a terribly traumatic event, just something that, well, like, for example, January Jones last year brought up um, auditioning for Coyote Ugly, and Jerry Bruckheimer <laughs> told her she was a terrible dancer. So we're looking for, you know, <laughs> these uh, milestone moments that make you question. I'd like to see him dance. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> On your tap shoes, brother. <laughs> well, sometimes you think something went bad, and then you get it, or it turns out it went great. And sometimes you think something, you were just amazing. <laughs> and... <laughs> Yeah, and they're like, she came in for this. Like, so you, you know, you don't know. You got, you oh, I, what am I? Yeah, no, I just I'm thought done. of something great. <laughs> what, what, what? I had my last kid, my Molly. She, she's seven, and they're like, you know, your agents are like, okay, let's go, ready to get out there. And I'm like, it takes me a couple years to lose the chub. <laughs> it just does. It, You know, I, I like to eat. I gain about 60 or 70 pounds. I'm not one of these girls that are like all hitting the yoga mat. I like to eat Cheetos, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and then after I have the kid, I like to have some drinks. So it's not gonna, <laughs> it's gonna hold on. So I'm like, I went in and auditioned for, oh, they're a, a married couple. One's a director and one's a producer. The guy's a director, the lady's a producer. I should probably TV, the Kings? Do what? TV? Oops. Yeah, I think TV, yeah, TV. Robert and Michelle King on The Good Wife? No. It's like an Italian name, <laughs> but one of them might have been Jewish. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Go yeah, figure. <laughs> I don't know. In what, New York, you're a little bit of both story, all right. the time. Yes. What was I saying? Oh, so that. You okay. Yes, I went in. Were and you I, drunk when you went in? I wasn't. I was. I should have been. And my agent's like, "Get out there and." You're gonna do it, and I was like pushing, you know, like 180. At the time. <laughs> this is after baby. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> this is after Molly, and I went in. I'm like, you guys, I just don't feel physically fit yet, right? I, you know, I have to get. And so I went in and I tried out, and I'm like, I did a really good job, I thought, and I left. I'm like, had my Spanx on, <laughs> just <laughs> so it was like a damn sausage, right? <laughs> and I came home and I got the call from my agency. I'm like, I'm like, I did good, right? Right? And they're like, you did great. The problem is that they're just, it's not, you are not, you know, <laughs> I feel like I go, I'm too fat. Is that the problem? They're like, you know, yeah, we're just going to wait a little bit. And I'm like, <laughs> I told you this, you know? And then so I was up here a little bit, and then you just get knocked down a little bit more. Yeah. And the weight <clears throat> thing. Mm hmm. Is the weight thing is a is a shit is a crappy thing to deal with sure. in this town. You know, it's like I'm from the town of eat, drink, and be merry and celebrate life and not like gluttonous. Right? <laughs> 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 you know, around right. Christmas it's fine, um, but it's like that was that was a crappy audition and a crappy result. Mm -hmm. So I just went home and ate some cheese whiz. <laughs> <laughs> Straight. I love that. Got <laughs> <laughs> a beer. Awesome. Oh, so, shit. That's great. Yeah. Have so you guys ever it. actually been confronted about your appearance and sort of, we need you to X, Y, and Z by this time? Or, I mean, how, For I mean, sure. that's, a, that's a common conception, but is that yeah. common? Obviously? Yeah, everything. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. Give us an example. No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. How, do, how does it, do you, do you just sort of think of it as, this is my job? It's like you're an athlete where I have to sort of be in a specific form to perform this. Well, I don't know because I mean on like the job that was like gave me the most sort of success would be Mad Men and mm -hmm. that I had to wear a fat suit in the first season and prosthetic makeup that made me look bigger. You know what I mean? So you sort of spend your whole kind of career like thinking that you have to be one way and then I got this amazing job and had to pretend to gain like 40, 50 pounds and so I think that you were you're trained to think that or you're supposed to think that, but it's not just actresses. I mean, it's all women and we mm -hmm. all have this perception of what we're supposed to look like. Yeah. Um, and I think that, I mean, 
that's what's so kind of great about all these women here today is we're all completely different looking, mm -hmm. you know, and we're all kind of beautiful but real women. And, um, you know, I think that's a kind of a nice image to get out there. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And I, I don't know, I've never had somebody say to me that I needed to look a certain way for a role. Yeah. But I've always sort of lived in dread of <laughs> what that would be like. Sure. If, you know, and I, I've heard stories that, that people are told things like that. And I think that as you're saying, you know, it's it's sort of our responsibility to to play these full-fledged women and to play women who look like women. the people that we <coughs> be in life, yeah. you know, and yeah. um, and I I think it's 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 really more interesting, and I think audiences appreciate that too. And it's a myth too, like yeah. because there's so many incredible performances and incredible actresses out there that has nothing to do with that, mm -hmm. you know. So it's sort of this myth that you're told to believe like growing up in the business is like you know I think you did like it just you you you're told to think that and you, then one day you know you get old enough and you're like oh wait <laughs> that wasn't true mm -hmm. <clears throat> I know for me it's a little bit different sometimes also because I'll audition for something and they'll just decide that they're not going ethnic with a character <laughs> um, which I hear a lot they use the word ethnic if not black, yeah. I mean, you know, it's just a, which it's in some ways you understand. Like people have artistic license to. That's what casting is: is fitting the right look to the right character. But you know, you whereas you could maybe lose some weight. I'm, there's not really anything I can do, nor would I want to, <laughs> about being black. And, and obviously, <clears throat> a lot has been made of Olivia Pope on your show being one of the first, if not the first, black characters to headline a network drama and. I think since Diane Carroll, is that true? Uh, in 40, f almost 40 years 40 since. Years. Uh, and that's, uh, yeah. I think, a disturbing statistic for people. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people realize that. Mm -hmm. And obviously Shonda Rhimes has been famous for her colorblind casting and, and those, the, the magic sort of what she's created. When you were auditioning for that role, how important was that? Like in your early discussions with Shonda, was she like telling you, I want you to play this character as if she's and every as woman, if she's or, black? Or did she, did, she, did she tell you that? Korean. Because <laughs> can you be? Um, she's very yeah. Yeah, Exactly. Mm. I have heard that, actually. Um, oh um, <laughs> it, she just knew that the character was going to be black because it's, it's inspired by a real woman, Judy Smith, who's African-American. So there wasn't a lot to talk about, no. Yeah. And what would you all say is the craziest thing you've ever done to get a role in terms of either cutting an audition tape? Well. Oh, you have one. You're already laughing. No, I just thought, I, well, this could be really good. Uh, no, what, but I've written a lot of letters to directors. I've done that thing. Like the, yeah, I've done yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I don't feel like Did it work? Thing. I don't know if it works. Did it work? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. It has and maybe, hasn't. Maybe you need to write a different letter. Maybe I'm not writing <laughs> the right letter. <laughs> Director. If you paste it together like the newspapers, is that weird? You put little little uh, really pictures of yourself <laughs> in your different moods. <laughs> if you kiss the envelope, <laughs> yeah, is that not the right? I think it works. Has that approach worked for anyone? It's a, it has yeah, once. Yeah, it has once, but I don't know that it works all the time because you Do can't you send always. To their house? No, no, like through, you know, like through the agents office, the production or office, or whatever. <laughs> You could take it to their house. You could. <laughs> Show real passion. <laughs> the boom oh, box guys, over your head. Time. Get a restraining order. Hey. <laughs> but what's the role that you've really fought for? <clears throat> Every one of them? Yeah. I mean, I feel like every time you go in and read or meet or audition or whatever it is, it's like you, you're there because, I don't know, that's just me anyway. I feel like I'm always fighting for it. Yeah. I have something crazy to say in, that, in regard to that. I feel like the ones that I fight for really hard, I don't get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh. totally. I don't know if anybody else has that experience, uh -huh. but to me, it's funny because I, sometimes I think that I have this idea of what I should be doing mm. and I'll fight really hard for that. And it doesn't mean that I, that's not something I should have been doing, but for whatever reason, it doesn't happen. And then I find that the things that have come along that have actually been the most rewarding and most fulfilling have been things that I actually had questions about and or that scared me in some mm. way or challenged me in some that's way. True. And um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to fight for it, you know? And I don't know, maybe that's just my own 
the way my world There is like a works, lot. When you look back, don't you feel like there is a logic to how things have fallen into place? Like mm -hmm. if only I could have known now, would I, you know, I, I would have cried a lot less or something. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. those heartbreak yeah. moments of <clears throat> like before Scandal, the only other two pilots I'd ever done were shows that got picked up, but I got fired. Like they <laughs> recast my oh. character on the shows. And, but when I look back, it was like, if I had gotten picked up, mm -hmm. if I had stayed on that show, I wouldn't have been able to do Ray. Mm -hmm. If I had, you know what I mean? Like it, when you look back, it looks like the most awful my career is over moment, but then it makes perfect sense mm -hmm. in the end. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Connie, what scared you about Nashville? Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> everything. <laughs> I mean, the singing scared me a lot because I hadn't sung in a really long time and so that felt really terrifying but also was one of the big reasons I wanted to do it because I thought it would be so cool to as an actor to expand in that way and try to challenge myself in that way so um, I guess that's you know and in, in what you're in terms of what you're saying too as we as I learn more about myself as, as an actor I realized that <coughs> challenging myself is actually um, what ultimately provides the most reward. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I was very nervous about singing. I was very concerned about, you know, I had just adopted my son and I, I was now going to have to take off and go start working in Nashville. And uh, that was concerning too. And but I was also very dedicated to that because I, I wanted the, the show to feel authentic and real. That's otherwise there was no point in doing it. And so, anyway, there were lots of there were lots of factors. But then there were also things that felt very exciting about the possibility of being able to play that role. So, and what's your experience been as a producer on the show? That's obviously amped up your responsibilities and probably stress as well. Yeah. Well, you know, I I think part of that for me was because I really do love. The, I love being part of the creative process in the show as opposed to, I mean, and as an actor too, I, I just love the, the entire the entire inception of, of all of it. And so, um, and Callie Corey has been really in inclusive and, and great about that. And, and uh, so it's taken a lot of extra time just because I do want to get involved with scripts and, and um, some of the some of the production values of things, <clears throat> and uh, but it's uh, but I but I but I think I would want to be doing that anyway. So in a way, the producer and and then on on some levels, I have no power at all. I mean, it means absolutely <laughs> nothing. I mean, really, truly nothing. <laughs> but um, but I think that it's it I it's are, those are things that I would love to be doing anyway. So it's nice to have the leeway to do that. How much of how much are you guys involved in the writing of your characters? I know Matt's been very clear about the involvement of the actors, which is not as much. But, <laughs> but how much for the rest of you? Um, are you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we don't no. like. Yeah, but the thing is, is like, it's so good. It's like, mm -hmm. why would you? I mean, what am I going to come up with that's going to be better? I'm not a writer. I can't write, and so I wouldn't even dare to try to come up with a better idea. And my idea is probably just going to be the stupid run of the mill idea that everyone else is thinking. And they've you you know you've got like a team of writers headed by Matt that are brilliant and that's mm -hmm. their job. So I think that's kind of like how we all feel on the show is it's just sort of like, yeah, why would we? Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, occasionally if you have an idea or a thought about a scene, you know, you're listened to occasionally. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's all there and it's kind of, you know, you don't want to mess with it. It's pretty good on its own, you know? How about the rest of you? Like, uh, Monica, did, they, did the writers talk with you about the cancer storyline beforehand? We, um, you know, I had gone around this time last year for um, a screening, a breast exam, a mammogram. That's what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Mary and Joseph. So I went. <laughs> Doing good. I know. I went and I got the mammogram and they said, we found a little something. We need to, you to come back in a few weeks. I went home and I panicked and I thought, this is BS. Nobody in my family has breast cancer. This is my first exam. And I emailed Jason and I said, you know, I'm really scared about something. Um, can we sort of maybe explore this storyline for Christina? I have to go back in a, a few weeks. And mm. I knew that his wife had gone through it, Kathy. And he emailed me back and he said, oh, my God, I have the chills. I'm in the writing room. We just broke the story for Christina. 
So wow. it was just kismet. Wow. Wow. And it was like, I went back and I'm fine. Obviously I'm good. Um, wow. And so it was just one of those things where he said, I really want you to be a part of, you know, this collaboration this year. And um, I always, I'm always asking the writers to write less for me. I get nervous in the big family scenes where everyone's talking, and I was telling Carrie that I just eat in those scenes now. <laughs> <laughs> it's much easier. It's fun. I don't have to try and put my two cents in. I'm like, I'm going to eat a piece of ham. <laughs> or some chicken. I don't know. And some cheese whiz. <laughs> well, product plays me. I have to turn the can. It's a bunch of work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> too hard. It's too hard. Um, but so, we're allowed, we're given freedom to kind of do that and, you know, um, that's celebrated. You know, they're like, oh yeah, you can add this or say this. So, um, Did you know she was going to make it through or did you? I sort of had, it? I did, I kind of knew because Kathy did, his wife did. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so a lot of the stuff that's written mirrors so what's true. going on in Jason's life. Like his child has, you know, is on the autism spectrum and mm. so... You know, I was like, okay, I think I'll be okay at the yeah. end of the year. Yeah, I love the whole wig thing. Amazing, no, especially amazing. on date night, yeah. the fabulous <laughs> date night wig. Yeah, she was so brokenhearted when oh, you bought yeah. the bad wig and like that wig was called Monique. I got to pick <laughs> that wig out on Wilshire Wigs. I went yes. by myself and I put it on. I'm like, so I'm great. gonna wear a red wig named Monique. <laughs> it was so, so great. So fun. I loved with the limo. You were so like, sweet and the... proud of it mm -hmm. and like. Yeah, I have it at home. <laughs> you do. Nice. Throw that thing on. Yeah, and uh, do you talk with Vince at all about the direction of your character? And is he? Are there specific things about her on the show that can be traced back to you? Um, mm, he, he basically really knew this story very intimately and, and in a very detailed way from the beginning, I think. So <clears throat> I think that the same went for, for all the characters. And I think Skylar was pretty clearly drawn for him. Um, and um, we did some talking about her at the beginning because she wasn't particularly clear to me. Um, mm -hmm. And she's a... She was a tough character um, mm -hmm. to play. Um, she's pretty shrouded, and she keeps everything pretty close to her vest. And so I needed to know more about her so that I could play her, right. even if the audience didn't right, end right. up knowing those things. And um, he couldn't necessarily sometimes answer all those questions. You know, there were, there were some hints that he could give me or some some direction that he could give me to go in, but some of it he really couldn't. Um, and, and so it was mine to fill in and fill out. And so, um, so a lot of that work was, was done on my own or with Brian. Brian and I did a lot of work together in terms of creating their past and their relationship and all that kind of thing. Um, but it was, um, we did talk at the beginning about the fact that one of the things that was confusing and bothersome to me was that in the pilot, um, Walt was working two jobs and Skylar was at home. And I thought, well, what is she doing at home all day? She's, you know, he's yeah. doing all the stuff. He's taking the kid to school and everything. And what is she doing? <laughs> and he said, she's pregnant. And I said, yeah. Okay. And, <laughs> and yeah. And, and, he, and he said, well, you know, she's just taking it easy. And I said, well, know people still do things and so we came up with something for her to do at home which ultimately fell by the the wayside but it was still for me it, it justified mm -hmm. some things and it made it more understandable for me in terms mm -hmm. of what she was doing with her day at home yeah. it was important for me mm -hmm. and he respected that and so we got into s some of those things and you know it, it, again ultimately I realized that Skylar was not necessarily ever going to stand on her own as a character as much as she was going to be there uh, in reaction to Walt a lot of the time. And so once I knew that, it helped me a lot as an actor to not feel like I wanted more from her than what she was really there for. And then I got to appreciate what she was there mm -hmm. for and then embrace that. And that was a big lesson in terms of 
the whole experience mm -hmm. for me, I think. Kate, so. have you had any conversations like that with Bo or any of the other writers on um, House of Cards? Like he, said on the, he said on the showrunner roundtable <clears throat> that when they saw Corey Stoll and they saw how great he was, they changed the storyline so that he would run for governor when that was supposed to be someone else. But uh, was that your experience? Were, were things tweaked based on your requests or your performance or things like that? Um, yeah, I mean, as the show sort of went on, I, mm -hmm. I, felt, I felt as if Zoe um, sort of was doing things that I kind of do. Really, really subtle things, but no, not like that. <laughs> um, not sexually, but as simple as, like, you know, at one point she's sitting at home, like, eating raw carrots for dinner, and it's so stupid, but that's one of those things that, like, Bo got to know me really well, mm. and, um, and we would joke about how my, my notes on scripts were always, um, I think I should say less, like, let's cross out these lines, sort of like you, yeah. I, less is more, mm -hmm. and not, not in every script, but for Zoe in particular, I always sort of felt like um, she wouldn't necessarily say that much, and so any time I would go up to Bo while we were shooting or before, he'd always get his pen out, like, ready to, like, cross out lines, <laughs> and that was just sort of um, how it happened, but he's such a brilliant writer that um, a lot of this stuff was just, it was already there. I didn't have to change very much. How do you guys resolve disputes on the set? Like disputes with who? With yeah. Showrunner, other cast members, Craft crew. Craft service. <laughs> Craft service. There's a I theme. Don't have to make, one. Makeup guy. It seems to be a theme. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I like bacon. <laughs> okay. Resolve yeah. What disputes. kind of disputes? I don't think that's. I don't think our job is to di is to s resolve disputes yeah. and. I don't find that we have, I mean, I feel like that's something that happens sort of elsewhere. In the corporate there, there office. Either in the writer's room or between producers and network yeah. or whatever. It's not really like an actor thing necessarily, I feel like. Yeah. How, how much, I know we talked about this last year with Parenthood's continuing sort of on the bubble presence mm -hmm. for a lot of people, which is very frustrating because the show is so beloved. How, how much are ratings a part of your daily conversations with your castmates? And <laughs> I know it's a huge stress for the showrunners and writers. If you, are you able to tune it out, or is it something that just kind of you just have to set aside? I don't understand it. I don't understand it. So <laughs> it's like I the electoral college. It's this yeah. strange I'm mathematical like a, equation. Yeah. That seems I'm like a million. To... That sounds like a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 exactly. A lot of people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I know. It's so I true. Know. Right? Yeah. I don't, I don't understand, I don't understand numbers. <laughs> <laughs> numbers are difficult. <laughs> We're artists. <laughs> Have they shielded? Do you think they shield the actors from, like, oh, you guys don't need to worry about that? Just no. Do, no, I mean, nobody's shielded from that. Our, no. Everybody stresses about it, whether you're in craft service mm -hmm. or <laughs> lighting and grips. And everybody's talking about it all the all time. <laughs> yeah, I think people just on our on our show anyway we just sort of you know when they say oh we got a 1.9 I'm like that's good right I don't know what that means right. does that mean 1.9 million no I don't think it no. does no it doesn't I'm like because then I'm thinking well that shirt. sucks yeah. <laughs> I, I used to think well, that well literally Netflix doesn't reveal so you don't have to worry about that <laughs> <laughs> and then who really has those boxes in their homes anymore that's what's so strange well, about it all the shows that are watched by DVR yeah. right, by, uh, well now yeah, they DVR include DVR and, numbers yeah. but they used to that's new and, and DVD Make yeah, all it's D's. all really strange. I try <laughs> not to, to pay attention to it. Double D. Karen, one thing. I <laughs> <laughs> just like stuff with that. I'm so glad we're not drinking right now. Yeah. I know. I don't know what you would be doing. So right now. <laughs> so That's not water. <laughs> Carrie, you've been pretty active politically um, over the past couple of years, and I'm wondering, I, I know others, Kate, okay, you were mentioning that as well, have been pretty politically active. Do you think that's a responsibility of actors, or, and have you experienced any you know, career blowback or anything, any negative reaction to that kind of stuff? I don't think it's a responsibility of actors mm -hmm. at all. I just think, for me, I've always been somebody who's, I come from a family where people really participate in the democratic process, and mm -hmm. I, I don't think that I should let me being an actor prevent me from continuing to do the mm -hmm. things I do, because I'm an American, mm -hmm. so lots of people fought for me to have a right as a woman to mm -hmm. be able to participate, and as a person of color, and so I don't want my acting to get in the way of that, but I don't do it as a, as a, 
person in the public eye as a celebrity, I do it as an American. Um, and blow back, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> How so? Um, well, when I, after I spoke at the Democratic National Convention this year, and the week after that, you know, we have a, this show has a very active life on Twitter and Facebook and all that, and I couldn't go near any of it because mm -hmm. it was, there was so, like, threats to my life and violence and sexism and race. I mean, it was really, it, it was all, it was like, it was shocking that, that, um, that just me speaking at the convention sort of incited all this anger. It was, but you know, thank God for a block on Twitter. <laughs> and, uh, what were they angry about specifically? Just the audacity of an actor speaking of- I guess so, and also disagreeing with my views, which I totally think is great. I love, I have no pro I would never block somebody or for saying I disagree with you, I think this, I, you know, I, I vote in a different way. I think that's amazing, that's part of where we live, but the threats to my life and the, mm -mm. you know, that's not no. so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have the others had experiences in politics, or are you wary of that kind of thing? I I have, and actually this year I wrote or co-wrote an op-ed um, because uh, Romney had started using "Clear Eyes, Full Hearts right. Can't Lose," which is a, a <laughs> quote from Friday Night Lights, and so um, I wrote an op-ed along with uh, Sarah Aubrey, our executive producer on that show, and we just t talked a little bit about what the actual intent of that slogan was and where it had come from and maybe questioned what the women of Friday Night Lights would actually think of Romney, you, you know, <laughs> using the, the, the quote. And, and um, you know, it, it, I was really nervous because we had started doing Nashville um, and I thought, I, you know, I got really scared about if there was going to be any kind of reaction to that. and and. You know, I don't do Twitter or any of that stuff, so I probably missed a lot of it. And also, Hurricane Sandy happened, which I that think was maybe distracting. which was really distracting to people. So, um, I, I, you know, I actually don't think that we got a, a lot of negative. But I think also because my intent with the letter was really about was really about trying to just be honest to what the what the slogan was about, and and not and and it wasn't about being partisan mm -hmm. per se. You know, so. Um. Oh, go ahead. I would say, what was it? Was was there a particular response that you got that was, you know, heartening or you know, someone that you didn't think would respond that did? Hmm. Um, well, I think I actually was just. I think I was happy with the response from women mm -hmm. um, because I think that we were we were going at it from the standpoint of the the women of Friday Night Lights and and um, so it was it was heartening to to see that that women had really kind of embraced this the this slogan for themselves mm. which was actually a slogan from a football team so that was it, it ended up feeling like an expansive experience mm. um, I was curious so I'll start with Anna uh, what's the best or worst career advice you've ever been given um, probably as a young actor, uh, somebody said, if, if there's anything else you feel you can do, you should do it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, was that good advice or bad advice? It was good because, oh. it's, because it's such a tough, it was from another actress, mm -hmm. an older, you know, my, a, a teacher of mine. And she was just meaning to say it's a tough, it's a tough thing to do. So if there's anything else that pu is pulling your heart or your desire, then you mm -hmm. should go for that. Mm. Um, because the life is difficult. because the life is difficult, and so if this is but if this is in your blood so deeply that you need to do it, then you know it's that that's that's the thing, yeah. and so go for it. And I thought that was I thought that was a great piece of advice. How about you, Kate? Um, I can't remember anything like specifically said, but my mom has always been really really supportive of of me and, and my sister. Um, who's an actress too, if you didn't know that. Um, <laughs> but since we were kids, because it's all I ever wanted to do, and no one in my family had ever acted before. Um, so it was very new, and she had no idea. My parents had no idea sort of how to help me um, sort of go that route, or like how to get an agent, like none of that. It was all very foreign to us. So, um, but she never, I mean, she was always so supportive. Um, you know, I was playing like 
the tree in The Wizard of Oz for like the first 10 years of my mm -hmm. acting career. Mm -hmm. And she was trees. so, she <laughs> was, it was a really long run. Um, how did I never get Dorothy? I'm still upset about that. Like red hair and everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And, 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 you know, so that was the, just the support was sort of all, that was the best thing. And she never doubted, she never doubted me. Or if she did, she certainly never. Didn't tell you. Never told me. <laughs> did you take um, acting classes? Did you study formally? No, I mean, my sister and I were in, you know, some really horrible, like, you know, community acting schools as, like, nine-year-olds. Um, it wasn't really acting class, but... I never, I was never comfortable with that. I mean, I think when I was about 14, I tried like a coach and I went once and it was not for me. I felt so self-conscious mm -hmm. and out of my own skin. I, it didn't feel right. So. What's the worst advice someone's given you? <clears throat> I don't remember that. Mm. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> um, probably good. It doesn't <laughs> stick. It didn't stick. Or maybe a piece of guidance someone gave you about a role or something that, like we were talking about in hindsight, was either terrible advice or? Um, I did this miniseries recently and Jane Campion directed it and mm. she gave me the best piece of advice I've ever gotten before an audition for an audition. Mm. We were on the phone and I was going to be like putting myself on tape with the casting director and then they're sending it to Australia and um, she said to me, I was so nervous just talking to her, you know, and she said to me, you don't have to hit the bullseye, just get the dart on the board. Mm -hmm. And as an actress, wow. you're like, oh my God, thank you. That's such a relief. Like such a relief. Like mm -hmm. I don't have to come in and like give you this full, mm -hmm. fully realized character. You know, I just have to show you a sketch of like what, which I think an audition should be. Like it's mm -hmm. just an idea of what you might do. Because um, it should be a collaboration and it's going to take a couple months and you know, it's just an idea. And so that was amazing. And wow. I think probably helped me to get the part because I don't, you know, it just really relaxed me. Yeah. yeah. Can I say something? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> no. Please. No, you can't. Please, please, please. Growling. So Mine is too. I'm not Mine kidding. Is too. There's, there's food afterward. There's food afterward. <laughs> My, we, I was, I'm one of four <laughs> girls and, my, and mm. we're all sort of athletic in our own way. And um, my dad would always say, I would always look at, you know, whether it's a scene or an audition or something, and this maybe could help you. If not, you can throw it out. But um, as, a baseball, you, as a baseball player, they step up to the plate, and you just take a deep breath, and you get your feet grounded and planted in, and you just point to over the fence, and you swing, and you imagine your scene going over the fence and the crowd cheering. And he oh, told me that uh, as a really little girl. I didn't start wow. acting until I was in my 20s, but if it didn't help you at all, it's okay. No, <laughs> no I really like that. that. Oh, I love that. And it really like helps. Like you know, it really helps with, with the really scary scenes that we have to do sometimes, mm -hmm. and you're like, holy shit, you, ooh, holy crap, and there's all this you know, <laughs> stuff around, and there's this, and you're just trying to stay focused, and you just, zone everything out and you just you become grounded and you just look up and you and it's a knowingness yeah that it's going to happen and you're okay i love that i think that's yeah. really cool so yeah. the next time you're scared it's nice it's like going to be a, a tissue, tissue. <laughs> my so dad watching here. us right now <laughs> really who nice. do you guys most rely on to tell you the truth about your performance I always rely on the director, which isn't always the best <laughs> idea. I mean, a lot of times it's a it's it's the right thing to do, I think, but um, not do, always. Do you guys have a, do you have a lot of different directors or not really, right? Yeah, well, on House of Cards, um, David Fincher did the first two hours, yeah. and then every two hours we'd have a new oh. director, which I thought was really was really nice and challenging. Um, because when you start with someone like Fincher, it's mm. you get really used to that. That's sort a specific of thing. world. That yeah. Is, yeah, I mean, and now, it, when I auditioned for him for the role, his his note to me his note to me was, um, okay, when you come back in a couple of weeks, just um, I want you to do the whole thing without smiling. And I thought I'm not smiling at all. Like, what is he talking about? I never smiled. 
And um, so then for like two months, I obsessed over how like, how am I smiling? Am I smiling? <laughs> um, and, and don't move your eyebrows. People rely too much on their smile and their eyebrows, which I think is really true. And I thought it was just me. <laughs> then on set, that was sort of his thing with most of us. And so we all were really conscious of that. But I think it's really, I think it's a really fair um, Thing to say about a I'm lot of us. I'm not going to be able to not think that now. <laughs> I I'm know. Yeah. obsessed right? already. Yeah. <laughs> All of our For characters sure. are going to suddenly change. So they like yeah. yeah. like yeah. smooth, yeah. brown, yeah. Yeah. And, like yeah. very yeah. serious. Yes. <laughs> We're all going to get <laughs> Botox. <Yeah. laughs> but then when he would tell you to smile, it was like, oh, this is exciting. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't remember anyone smiling on House of Cards. Like the entire show. Really rare. Yeah. That's so cool. You don't ever have to get Botox with Fincher because he won't let you move your forehead. And you anyway. develop no wrinkles. <laughs> yeah. How about the rest of you? Is there someone, not necessarily about your performance, but somebody you rely on to help you sort of guide the craziness of the business, give you advice? Maybe it's someone on your team, family member, someone you can always rely on to tell you the truth. And Oh, I have that. <laughs> my cousin. I have a my cousin who's almost like a sister to me, and she um, is not in the business at all, but she loves it, and she grew up watching every movie and every TV show, and um, she's always been the, whenever I've been nominated for an award, she's been the first person to call me and tell me yeah. without question. Oh my God. And, um, uh, you know, so it's really nice because I feel like, and she, so she loves she loves the business and kind of has an understanding of the business. She's a lawyer, so she has like a brain that can mm -hmm. think in the business way. Um, but then she also loves the art of it. So, um, and she's a family member. So it's a nice. I I Trust love that, that I have that. Yeah. How about the rest of you? Probably Goldie, my best friend. Um, the Connie knows she's also kind of in the business, but not an actor, and and she's very 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 smart way smarter than me and um she's just very just gives amazing advice professionally and personally mm -hmm. right she's she very really cool does. and she won't she wouldn't be afraid to be you know to say something you might not want to hear yeah. which is like you know you're like your parents or you know so, or you're someone who's part of your team it might be a like slightly different thing um they might kind of want to tell you what you want to hear but you know, a good friend will let you know if you, you need to hear something. Yeah, there's a real distinction with that mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. yeah, For sure. Cool. Connie, you mentioned um, going to do Nashville after you just adopted. There's a lot of personal sacrifice that goes along with these jobs. What, what do you guys think has been the biggest personal sacrifice you've made for your careers? Going to do Nashville <laughs> after I just adopted a baby. Yeah. Um, that was big. It's been it's been big. You know, I mean, basically, I had just become a mother and moved to a town where I didn't know a soul and started working 16 hours a day without a support system. And it's been it's been a journey for sure. What did you do? Well, you know, I'm still doing it. I mean, it's you know, I luckily I work with wonderful people who are really supportive, and the people in Nashville have been so great. I have a nanny who came with us, yeah. and so that's been great. But it's been it's, it's been challenging. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, of course. It is tough once you have kids to sort of go, oh boy, am I gonna miss this parent-teacher meeting, or am I gonna? You feel this you know, sense of guilt sometimes, and that's tough to deal with. But you also have to look at it like, okay, mom's going to work, putting food on the table, you know, that's how I grew up, mm -hmm. uh, blue collar, kind of working class home. And they have to understand that. You have to just have a life of balance and not feel guilty all the time. Because I think that your kids can then sense that, mm -hmm. And then they're like, uh -huh, I've got her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. Well, Even at two, mm -hmm. you can sense it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's just about balancing it, I think. How about the others? Personal sacrifices for. Well, it's hard when you, you know, I'm, I'm not a, uh, a mother uh, yet, but it's so when you hear these sacrifices, it's, you know, oh, I don't sleep sometimes. Like, I can't, <laughs> what am I going to say? You know, my sacrifices sometimes don't seem that, yeah, sometimes I'm sleepy. <laughs> um, <laughs> they don't seem that important. Well, what so about are, the, the privacy aspect? Clearly that affects everyone here. Um, I don't you know. experience that. I don't Me either. No. People don't recognize you? 
Well, I mean, like at the airport, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's never airport. anything right. like. Although you guys, I flew in last night. <laughs> this is pretty funny, I have to say, because it has gotten really bad at the airport. Like that's the one place where I'm like, gosh, you guys really dig me. Oh. <laughs> so I got in last night from Nashville, and um, there, this woman, the greeter, came to take me out to my car. And really, their job is to keep the paparazzi guys away from you. And like, but still, there was one guy, and he was actually very courteous and nice. And so we start walking to the car, and she like looks behind us, and she's like, "Oh God, they're coming!" <laughs> and the car, all of a sudden, I felt like, "Am I in a movie?" She's like, "They're coming! Run, <laughs> run!" <laughs> you guys. Literally, I was running down no the sidewalk way. of the airport, like dragging my bag, and I'm like, I feel ridiculous. And are they gonna photograph me running away from them? Like, that's gonna be really They would just say something nice, like, Connie Britton lands in LAX. I like, know, that's I, amazing. But it really Run. was, I, I was suddenly Stop. in like Drop some roll. kind of really exciting <laughs> action movie with my with the greeter, and she ran to the car and opened the door for me. She's like, get in! Like, okay. That does sound the first time that it happened to you in that to that to well that yeah I mean and I didn't right. have my son with me last night which is also the first time like Aww. I usually they always get me with my son and which I don't really <laughs> love but um yeah I've, I've never been I've never had to run let's put it that way <laughs> what I are some get fucked what are some I strange know. fan interactions you've had about either I know people get stop you thinking you're your character and maybe you know give you insights about we were talking about this before like the thing about like the backhanded compliment sort of <laughs> yeah. thing where it's like you I always get you look skinnier or younger mm -hmm. and it's oh, yeah, like it's yeah. just every single time you're you just like you know that's not a compliment right oh, yeah. like you know like I that thank you but that's not a compliment <laughs> you know but do they know they really I don't think they know of course they don't know do you Absolutely. ever say yeah, you probably shouldn't say that only I once have, I have one once girl. said I'm not sure how to take that that's what I said I say that I was like, sometimes I'm not sure how I feel about that I'm not sure how to take that then and then they like you laugh and you're like, eh. no, they just laugh. Right. But I think maybe next week they'll think about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we were we were um, we were shooting in a grocery store in Nashville, and um, you know, it's it's a lot of like they don't really lock down the set so much. So it's like right outside of the shooting area, there are people just standing around watching. And so I like did my thing, and they called cut, and I went over, and there were these two older ladies standing there, and one of them grabbed me. She goes. You look so much bigger <laughs> <laughs> on camera. And I was just, uh, <laughs> just like, thank you. thank you. Maybe she meant taller. No. I do, yeah. Maybe, yeah. I, 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 told I tell myself that. that. Yeah. Like, she meant taller. Uh, thanks a lot. People do say, people so always funny. say to me, like, you're so short. Like, yeah. you're really small. Mm -hmm. You're really short. Like, you're, you're like, like weird. Yeah. Like, it's well, weird. It's <laughs> better than, hey, you're <laughs> a fan. <laughs> it's much better than that, yeah. <laughs> the scale of things is better. Could you imagine? Yeah. You are such a fan of it. Anna, did you get a lot of that in New Mexico? Because you guys were oh sort of obviously God. the only show in town at that point. Yeah, they, they're, and they're crazy about the show. They don't have a lot so. to do in Albuquerque, too. So I think the no. seeing you guys out and about is yeah. kind of a highlight. It's very exciting. <laughs> it's very exciting. And I think that um, it sort of harkens back to the thing about, you know, the privacy issue. I think that for me the thing that I didn't expect with the show was was how people got they got so into the show and they got so into the characters but there was there was this incredible backlash against the character of Skylar uh -huh. and um, it was something that none of us expected and didn't understand when it first started happening and you know it it I wasn't really aware that it was happening until somebody mm -hmm. started bringing it up and then people would come up and say, you know, people really think your character's a bitch. Did mm -hmm. you know that? And I was like, I do now. <laughs> thanks, for, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for informing me. <laughs> um, and, then I, and then it really began to permeate my, my daily existence because I, would, I started being aware that it was being discussed on the internet a lot. There were blogs, there were chat, you know, things like that. And having a, a daughter who's 12 years old oh, wow. and knowing that mm -hmm. she's, she, I don't let her on, you know, I know that she's guarded at my house from that, but she may not be guarded at other people's homes. And so that started to become a real area of concern for me. And um, you can't control what people are going to do in terms of that, but it started to really, really, 
become a different level of of something in there that was very, you know, deeply upsetting. Um, not only because it was interesting that this sort of gender war broke out over over the character of Skylar in terms of men saying, "Ah, she's such a drag. She's such a bitch. She's a, she's a nagging with Walt just because he's cooking crystal meth. What's the big deal?" <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> she was ruining all this fun. Apparently. Yeah, ruining all the fun. And then the women were going, "Are you kidding me? Mm. This is." But isn't it, that know. funny that that would have never happened with a male character? That they're. Like there would be never a sense that this guy is ruining. You know, it's just such yeah. an interesting. It was such an interesting yes, it thing. It was. Yes. It was. It yes, was. It is. Yeah. It's very interesting. Just, say, just saying. It's a, yes. It's interesting. The funny thing yes. about TV too that that's new is this idea that that they're like we come into their homes. Mm -hmm. It's very intimate. So it's yeah. it's new. For for me, like very I frequent too. yeah, like I had, I was sort of accustomed to people kind of knowing who I was, but about that thing, like mm -hmm. that thing that they went to a movie theater and they saw, and it had a beginning, a middle, and an end. So it clearly wasn't me. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is like they're invested in not that thing they saw; they're invested in what I'm going to do next week. Mm -hmm. They're invested in things that haven't happened. Like so, it's like this ongoing dating relationship mm -hmm. where you meet once a week at the same time in the same place, and they're in their underwear, you know. And <laughs> so it's very. It's well, so you're much on more intense. Twitter as well. I mean, that, that's your show, especially, has had a lot of success engaging viewers on Twitter. Do you feel that the involvement that you have personally with fans is is a good thing generally, <laughs> or what's the downside to it as well? Um, yeah, I mean, I I am really. You read the good stuff, and you <laughs> that's what you do. <laughs> that's what you engage with, and that's what you you know. So I I don't I don't really feel that as much in the world. Um, but you're not tweeting as the character, you're tweeting as yourself. Yeah, but I don't, I don't tweet fans. about my personal life. I don't tweet things that are about me. I, I tweet about the show, about work. So, yeah. Do you guys feel pressure to do that, to interact with fans in that way? I'm starting to a little bit. I had to have someone explain like what the hashtag was. Uh, so what is the hashtag? Like, I'm week. thinking hash browns. Because on your show they have it on, on the bottom yeah, of the screen. Yeah, yeah. In the middle yeah, of the yeah. dramatic scene it'll be yeah, like hashtag. Hashtag. What is Tui? What is the totally. hashtag? Totally. The hashtag is the, is the symbol. Is it not? The, yeah, the, the number symbol? sign. Mm -hmm. It's the actual symbol that happens before. Or is it the phrase? Is it like? Both. No. It means like both. So Mad Men be the hashtag? Yeah, hashtag Mad Men. Not the symbol. No, it would be it would but be the number both. sign, then Mad Men, and right. then when you're that tweeting about Mad Men, hashtag. people can look on Twitter just if they want things about Mad Men That's and find it there. That's crazy to me that you can like one thing and then it just attaches itself to everything. It's like a mm -hmm. Google search on yes. Twitter. So oh, if you had your own you. Twitter, <laughs> it would be like hashtag and then your name. No, no, no your, yours would be name. at. Would yours would be hashtag. at Connie Britton. <laughs> She's yeah. like, no, Thank no, God, that's right. an <laughs> Right with We're you, sister. We're explaining Twitter. No idea. I'm going to tweet it's you to happening. figure out how to no, tweet. I, I actually, I have, a, I have a woman that I work with mm -hmm. who is a digital social media consultant mm -hmm. who, because I was terrified to go on Twitter because I'm, I'm you know, private and didn't, mm -hmm. and so she really helped me to figure out how to engage as, you know, as an actor around the work to be to be able to promote the work without mm -hmm. feeling like I, were, like I was promoting myself mm -hmm. um, and she's really helped me <laughs> phenomenally because mm -hmm. yeah it was t it's scary it's like this whole other universe well also I think the self-promotion aspect of it is uh, awful is it feels least, disgusting yeah like not so you want to feel like there's a I've purpose never been around that it kind of you know that's just not what it's been about so I'll give you her number yeah <laughs> <laughs> Allison Peters <laughs> if you guys could be on any show in the history of TV what would you on. Oh my God! Three's Company, hands down. Wow. Nice. As who? Chrissy, Janet, anyone. <laughs> Mr. Curly, I don't care. <laughs> it's my favorite show of all time. Thank Aww. you very much. Miscommunication. Awesome. I love. That. I love Mary Tyler Moore. Did you tell Jason? Oh, that? I mean, it was Mary crazy Tyler. when I met him. Yeah, of course. Duh. Duh. Obviously. <laughs> Not That's what I passed you as. Right? What, why? Shoo-in. <laughs> because it was just such a perfect show. It was a half-hour comedy. They were all such amazing, like rich, mm -hmm. wonderful characters. And she was just, she got to be so badass. Mm -hmm. Like she was such an, she was such, and she was funny. so inspiring and funny and smart and head of her life and mm -hmm. all of those things. Just super great cool. inspiration, you know, growing up with that, I think. Others? 
mine's not as good, but or not as inspirational. But I was really obsessed with my so-called life. Oh, yeah, and, yeah that's you know. a good show. And it only lasted how long? One season. season, which is like my dream, because I don't want to have <laughs> any commitment, <laughs> and so that would be perfect. Oh man, yeah, <laughs> I loved that show so much. Yeah, yeah. So I really did. I watch reruns of it a lot. Yeah, it's so good. How about you, Anna? I'm sort of thinking The Wire. Oh, oh wow. you went there. Great Some, something yeah. light and different from Breaking Bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> like, I know. <laughs> Which side would you be on? Which side would you be on? Oh, God, like that's a tough one. No, I think I'd be, I'd, it's good to be bad. You Way know? better. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's fun hashtag. to be bad. Mm -hmm. That could be your hashtag. hashtag. <laughs> that would be my hashtag. There it is. Memoir. <laughs> Good to be bad. How about you, Carrie? What was your oh, formative I was hoping you TV show? show. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. Um, I keep thinking of the Cosby Show because <laughs> that's what I grew up on. I, we weren't actually allowed to watch a lot of television, um, but that we were allowed to watch. Um, yeah, that maybe that would be it. Last question. One. What bugs you guys about TV? Huh. What one thing bugs you about TV? Not commercials anymore because you get them back. <laughs> <laughs> um, that it just keeps going like year after year. <laughs> I, if, really if, a like show, if a show is like on for a certain amount of what? seasons, even if it's like five, then I know like I can get through five seasons in like a year. Like, because I'll watch an entire, mm -hmm. I watched all of Mad Men in a very short amount of time. Yes. So you're talking um, about binge watching TV. Yeah, I yeah. love binge watching. Yeah. But if it keeps going, then I get very overwhelmed. <laughs> I just sure. think that there's a shortage of good shows. And, you know, studios making the commitment and the investment to make those shows. Because it's much easier to make those other fluff shows. Mm -hmm. And we all know what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go home and watch some of All of them. <laughs> Thank you. Yay. Next time we'll have Me one. Me too. Yeah, sure. Yeah.